Yesterday in Parliament, Sir Keir Starmer went on the attack against the government over the murder of a young girl in the East End of London. It was committed by somebody who was out on parole. And what Sunak was saying was, look, this is all wrong. The parole system isn't working. Crime is rising. Let me tell you what he didn't say. And as PMQs went on and the afternoon debates went on, Labour MP after Labour MP got up to say, isn't it terrible that all these children, all these young children who've crossed the English Channel have gone missing from hotels, quite a lot of them from Brighton. Well, 88% of those children are from Albania. And what no one in the House of Commons even thought to say is that, of course, many of them won't actually be children at all. Rather like the horrendous case that came to light earlier this week of a guy from Afghanistan who claimed that he was 14 when actually he was 20, who murdered somebody in Bournemouth last summer, having already been convicted of drug dealing in Italy, a double murder in Serbia, and a failed asylum claim in Norway. Yet he was here free to kill. He got sentenced to 29 years in prison, but that wasn't even debated in the House of Commons. I didn't hear it on the BBC's Today programme. And interestingly, I went through The Guardian, cover to cover, no mention of this case at all. It's all too difficult. It's all too awkward. No one wants to discuss this subject. I bet none of you have seen that yesterday in Truro Crown Court, a failed asylum seeker, yes, failed, asylum seeker awaiting deportation, deportations that never actually happen, was convicted of rape. That won't even make a national newspaper. And it goes on and on and on, sticking in the West Country, who remembers Lorraine Cox. She was murdered in 2020 in Exeter by a failed asylum seeker. Somebody who came into the country, didn't get asylum, should have been deported, but hey, no one talks about that. Or remember the car bomb that happened a couple of years back in Liverpool, outside, yeah, outside a hospital. Or the Sudanese man who stabbed six people in Glasgow in 2020. Well, in the same month, of course, there was a triple stabbing that took place down in Reading, again, a failed asylum seeker. In Bolton that year, a seven-year-old girl murdered by a failed asylum seeker. And you can remember perhaps going right back to 2017, the bomb on the London Underground committed by somebody in the country who lied about his age, not to mention the horrendous London Bridge attacks in which 11 people were murdered. And one of those was a failed asylum seeker. So even when, even when the system works in some way, even when we reject young men for their asylum claims as ineligible, they're still free to stay in the country and go out and commit rape and murder. And I promise you, all of those numbers I've given you, all of those incidents I've given you, and by the way, there are many, many more, they all come from a time when the numbers crossing the English Channel were relatively low. Can you imagine where this is going to be in a couple of years' time? Now, of course, anyone that dares to talk about this get shouted down, racist, xenophobe, extremist. But I would have thought that the first duty of government, of parliament, and His Majesty's loyal opposition was to protect the people that live in this country. We can get annoyed about the boats, annoyed about the numbers, annoyed about the hotels. By the way, Serco now boasting they've got 40,000 migrants in hotels, and now writing to people to try and put them up in private houses. We can moan about the cost of over five million pounds a day, but actually folks, the real question here is one of our safety, is one of our national security. And almost nobody in Westminster even wants to discuss it. So please get in touch with your MP, ask them, do they actually care?